Hey math students, uh, we're going to do a short little video today and we're going to talk about piecewise functions. So piecewise functions are functions that are defined differently for different parts of the domain. Okay? Uh, and let me just give you a quick example. Okay? Here are, where am I looking? Here we go. Here's some parking rates for a parking garage kind of near my house. And the first 15 minutes are free. That's nice. But as soon as you stay 15 minutes, after that, uh, you have to pay $4 if you stay between 15 minutes and, uh, and an hour. And actually, I should say, instead of 0 to 15, let's say less than. Okay? Less than 15 minutes are going to be free, but as soon as you hit that 15 minutes, that's 4 bucks. If you stay between 1 and 3 hours, it's going to be $7. And if you stay more than 3 hours, they charge $10. Okay? Then reasonable parking rates. Now, how would I uh, uh, write that as a function? Well, I would say, okay, uh, the rates, let's, let's call it C. C of T, okay? C stands for cost, T stands for time. It's gonna be measured in minutes. So here's how I write this. I write a set bracket, and I'm gonna say C of T is zero, for t between 0 and 15. Okay? So it's going to be, so, so as long as t is between 0 and 15, uh, c of t is going to be 0. Then c of t is going to be 4 for t between 15 and 60. Okay? Now what is that saying? It's saying if t is in that interval there, anything between uh, 15 and 60, then c of t is going to be 4. c of t will be 7 for t between 60 and 180. And then c of t is going to be 10 for t from 180 to, I guess, infinity. I hope they don't park there that long. Okay, and then you don't put another set bracket over here. I know it seems kind of weird to open up a set bracket here and then not have one on the other side, but that's how we do it. Now, uh, this and this mean exactly the same thing. This is how we write it mathematically. So this means if I wanted to know what is C of uh, 5, well, the first thing I would do is I would look over here on the right, and I'd say, which interval does this 5 fall into? Oh, it's here. Okay, that means it's going to be 0. What does that mean? It means it's free to park for 5 minutes. Okay. What about C of 80? Well, let's see. 80 falls in this interval right here between 60 and 180, so it's going to be 7. What does that mean? It means to park for 80 minutes, which is an hour and 20 minutes, it's going to be in there and it's going to cost me $7. Okay? So this here and this here say exactly the same thing. Now, what about graphing? Well, it's kind of what you would expect it to be. Uh, this is all in the first quadrant, so I'm just going to draw my axes like that. And uh, I would say, let's see, this is, I'm going to go up to 180. So let's have this be 60, 120, 180. And that means that's going to be 15 right there. So for the first 15 minutes, this is going to be 0. So I put a 0 up until here, and I put a filled in dot there. And then it's 4 here. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. And then it's going to be 4 when t is between 15 and 60. So I'm going to go to, oops, hold it, I need a lot more than that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to put an open dot here and then go to there and put a closed in dot. Okay, open dot means, uh, oops. Hey, I did that wrong. This is supposed to be the open dot. And this is supposed to be a closed in dot. 
and this is an open dot, okay? Now let me explain to you what I just did. This is an open dot because this, this little piece right here corresponds to this interval here between 0 and 15. And notice the 15 is not included. That's why I have an open point right there. The 15 is included here, so that's why it's filled in there uh, at the point 15, 4. But it's not filled in at the point 60, 4. Okay, because it's not in that interval. And then we're going to jump up to 5, 6, 7. Uh, we'll put a filled in dot there. And we're going to go all the way over to uh, 180 and have an open dot. And then 8, 9, 10, fill that dot in there. And then it would go, well, indefinitely like that. So that is a graph of that piecewise function. And it's, I think it's labeled, or it's named pretty well. It's piecewise. It's in pieces like that. Let's look at another one. Like I said, this is going to be a short video today. So we're just going to look at a couple of examples and we'll be done. Uh, and let's have this other example be a little weirder. Um, let's say this is going to be f of x is okay. uh, x for x less than 0. It is 2x for x between 0 and 2. And then it is 5 minus x minus 2 squared for x between 2 and infinity. All right. So what would f of negative 3 be? Okay, so again, we come over here. You know, I didn't write this very well. If I'm using interval notation here, I should really use interval notation here. So let me say x goes from negative infinity to 0, like that. That's more consistent. Uh, so I would look at this negative 3, and I'd say, where does it fall? Okay, it falls into this category right here, into that interval. So that means f of x will equal x. So this will equal negative 3. What about f of 5? Well, 5 is greater than 2. It falls in that interval. So that means it's going to be 5 minus 5 minus 2 squared. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. And what about f of 2? f of, hmm, is it this one or is it this one? Well, this one does not include the 2, but this one does include the 2. It's this one. Okay? So this will be... 5 minus 2 minus 2 squared, well, that's just going to be 5. All right? And then finally, let's look at f of uh, 1.5. Well, 1.5 is between 0 and 2, so it falls into this interval. So it's going to be 2 times 1.5. That'll give us 3. That's not so hard. Now, what does this look like? Okay, so when x is less than 0, f of x is just x. I know what that looks like. That looks like this. Okay, coming up here. And then it's 2x when x is between 0 and 2. So uh, it's up to here. I'm going to put a dot there. So basically, it's still linear, but the slope gets steeper between 0 and 2. Now notice I put an open dot there. That's because this does not include the 2. And at 2, as we saw, f of 2 is 5. So actually I'm going to go 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put a point there. And then I'm going to go like this. It's going to be a... <laughs> That's not a very good parabola, but you get the idea, okay? This was just a little sketch. It wasn't a really good graph. Um, weird looking function, but it's a function. Okay, it's there's nowhere in here you can draw a vertical line and hit it in more than one two place in, in more than one place on the graph. 
So it's definitely a function. It's just a function that is defined in three different pieces. This piece, this piece, and this piece. That's why it's a piecewise function. Okay, that's all there is to it. See you next video. Bye-bye.